Yeah, I'm my phone for my Zulu time. Yeah. Uh, so 10Z is, so we're four hours behind. Yeah, so 6 a.m. Yeah, that's sort of starting to break them up. But, uh, so is it one? Yeah, which model are you using? The yeah. Nam high res. Which, they also just updated the GFS, so now it got worse. Well, we could be in California and add 50 inches of rain. 50? 5 0 over the weekend. What? 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 So it's when I read it, it's like, well, they were complaining about another outbreak. I don't know, maybe 20 inches. Sure, that's what I read. Yeah, it's in the newspaper. It must be true. No, it wasn't in California. It's not on the internet. All right, so we're recording at really six o'clock, and we have four board members here. So I'm going to call to call to order the meeting, this regular meeting of the Danville School Board of Directors. There are four of us here. Um, I'm waiting on Melissa Conley. She should be there eminently, and she'll be able to budget the discussion. We may move some things around. So um, we're all in the same room. We can introduce ourselves if you'd like. I'm Clayton Cardio, chair of the board. I'm Tim Sanborn. Dave. Dave Okay. Mark. Uh, Mark Cocker, superintendent. Mike and Justin walking on me. Sarah Welch, elementary principal. Larry Kagan, secondary principal. Dave Shelley, technical learning director. All right. Who's okay. you still? You have to say anything yet. We're asking your name in a few minutes. All right. And so that's everyone who's here, and we're going to move on. Are there any additions and or changes to the agenda? Uh, only we do get. Um, since, uh, I think it's also okay. important that it should be to the board. Okay, no addition to changes to the agenda. Um, we're now looking at the minutes from December the 6th. The December the 6th minutes were distributed with the packet. So you had them prior, Molly had them up by about December the, December the 8th. And they're all good. Anybody have a chance to read through them? I have a, a edit on the, um, under, um, I'm looking for Python, I think, under the November 29th minutes. Yeah, the motion, it just needs to read November 29th instead of November 15th. Right. Which is what I might have put the 15th instead of the 29th. So I can make that change. So we have one typographical error to be corrected. Um, anything else, anybody? There's no independent motion for the minutes. Um, I have have a motion to approve those minutes from Tim Sanborn, second from second. Dave Cole here. All in favor of approving those minutes, please say aye. 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 No motion carries. All right, so that's good. Moving on, administrative reports. Let's start with the superintendent, please. Can you give me a packet? Do you remember to see what's going on? Well, on the, I mean, I have an agenda, but not. You know what's happening? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So I believe the consultants are here at the start of the month. Well, they're scheduled for the day. They come today. I think it was four from the four, five, six, eight, four. Anyway, so the consultants at the uh, agency hired come into the detailed facility uh, evaluation. They're coming on with uh, access to our uh, very detailed direct calling report. Um, the, Department of Energy Renew America Schools Grant is a great opportunity if we can pull it off. There's a number of things that we do in this building that fall into the eligibility category. So I'll be working on that. I can't tell you on specific details right now. I have to submit a, a concept letter by the public safety team. I just going to cover maybe as many as a dozen projects across the energy, across the schools. Um, and Nothing new on PCBs as far as the handle. We got a letter, um, I think it was yesterday, uh, from DEC with a, uh, a, an update on status on what the testing uh, results were. And noted that we already started mitigated the existing uh, uh, the existing findings at the school here. So waiting now for a work plan from the engineer to come in and do source testing and have seen the feedback of that yet. Uh, they're significantly behind on the work. I think we're talking weeks still. 
but it, we've done, uh, as far as the state's concerned, we've done everything we can do and have to do here. Things are okay for now. All those filtration things are in all of our, all of our mitigation plans. Yeah, but there was only a couple spots. Right, right, right. The ones that we put yeah. in there. Yep. Yeah. 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 It turned out that the, the um, those big Kappa filters that we were given last year actually have carbon filtration. Addition to just like three different kinds of filters. So we just moved a couple of units around. I said that was more than enough for it. Yeah. Um, and um, <clears throat> we're 99.5% there in terms of the teacher contract settlement. Still across a couple of teams and dying a couple of I's. And uh, when we get signed on with the association ratifiers, uh, then I'll be bringing that back around with the district boards. We may not get this all ratified before the February cycle. Um, but we'll see. So we're we're, we're going to potentially have well, there's at least one more meeting coming up in January. If they're ready, I'll, I'll ask the person I'll put that on the agenda. So this is just very important to write But we're meeting Thursday. We have the council house assigned. And does the CCSU board have to sign off for the district board sign No, up? no, there's no real sequence on that, but we're going to have to call them. Probably call a special CCSU board meeting with the CCSU board. Thank you, Thank you. Yeah, we're going to make sure we're going to We'll figure out a 15 minute meeting. Okay. Uh, that's it. Other than that, we're back from vacation. Uh, any questions for the superintendent? Hearing none, uh, student services report. We can pass it. Do you have a chance to review that? Student services report, board members. Yeah. Anybody has any questions? They can send them to Anna or ask them to take them down. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hearing none, uh, we want the principal's report. Principal's report back to a Monday. Mm -hmm. And um, had a chance to talk about it. You know, anybody have a chance to read through it? Anybody have any questions? I'll turn it over to um, Larry and Sarah if you'd like to talk about anything that's in it. Um, so, one of the things that we really wanted to highlight in light of budget season is um, the work that our interventionists are doing and the intervention positions that we have <coughs> last year and this year for, with ESSER funds. And so, um the a lot of the narrative section is written by them directly um, from them and the work that they're doing with um students at the various levels and, um both of us feel that this is that they're an invaluable resource to helping to strengthen our instruction to students and helping to support students and um making sure that they are reinforcing what's being taught in, in the classroom um, and as well as the recovery that has to happen as a result of COVID and being out of school for those months and then just having the education shift um, for such a long period of time and just being in the school and so that's, that's what we wanted to share with you since there wasn't a lot of school days um well what we want to highlight emily's concert we have another uh, Emily's concert, not, not Emily's concert, I know that's the student for the concert. <laughs> Sorry, it was absolutely fantastic. I've been watching a lot of concerts over the years, and I was probably the best I've ever seen. And a lot of help from me and other teachers, but the kids were just like, it's just fantastic. <laughs> There's video. No, that came right from the Kingdom Access TV. Kingdom Access TV. Yep. We gave some pictures from the sound booth and uh, put those on our Facebook page. Um, but it was really cool to chat. It just was fantastic. So, okay. Are there any questions for the principals here? I just had a question about um, help for the students. I know that's perfect. Standardized testing is, but um, compared to the state of before COVID, is it drastically different? 
I haven't compared the star data, star test data this year to other years. Mm -hmm. I find that um, there's too many variables to compare it and use it for much yeah. year to year. Um, but throughout a school year, it's it's pretty good to see the growth for a student. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're doing the second round of testing in January. And so I'm hoping to present some data, at least for grade seven. Other grades as well. After this round of testing, now it has to be you know aggregated data. We can't really get into too, much, into too small a number to yeah, see you know if we know that um, there were a lot of kids in the fall below proficient, whatever score that was. Hopefully, we can see fewer kids yeah, below proficient by January. That be That's the hope. Mm -hmm. And the state pricing is different than the star. Right, right. Yeah. This is part of our local assessment system. Yeah. And uh, so we purchased, I don't know, several years back, um, a subscription to star 360. You know, it's wildly imperfect. It's a pretty good screener. You know, you can always find something wrong with everything, but I like it. Yeah. It gives us a good report that we can show you uh, either at the next meeting or the one after once we have that one data. And we'll see, see the growth or not. I mean, we'll see what to do. And the state data, we can't compare the two. The state data has been so crazy the last few years. You know, we have to go all the way back to the spring of 2019 to have data that maybe was reliable. But then 2020, they didn't test. 2021 was the, the hybrid year. And so people had to test. They're supposed to test everybody. And that meant the district I was working with, we had to pull kids off. The kids who were so doing we, remote schooling came in yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did. Yeah. and tested those who were willing to show up. The same. Mm -hmm. And last year, with the intense amount of instances, you know, the entire fall was filled with like, classes and teachers in quarantine, some of them for weeks at a time. And so to put any stock in any of that testing, yeah, I just don't. I just I don't see how it's going to give us useful data. Um, added to which, because it's a once a year test, right? It's, yeah. it's not. It, it's really tough to get student buy into the test, and then additionally, it's, it's a different format. It's mm -hmm. different than the star. Yeah, right. Right. Um, in its format too, and so that that and sort of the alien nature of it also yeah. makes <laughs> it. Yeah. Um, it makes really Right, right, but yeah. the but the, the test itself also has its own, which is why it would switch. Right, so that's why they've gotten rid of it. Right, so then there's going to be a new platform this spring that will be known nothing but yes, yes. And which will be in the phone. Yes, and so then um, we won't be able to compare the state test either because it's never been the, the, the star school because you can take it, you can take it as many times as you want throughout the year, really. Yeah, and it's yeah. You see it, a baseline. You have some kids. Uh, who are taking it more frequently as part of their day. Mm -hmm. so you can use it. It's not a great progress monitoring tool, but you can use it that way a little bit. Um, I guess I think the ST is actually used that data from the winter test. Yeah, okay. test to help us today. Yeah, that'd be helpful to see that. Yeah, and I'll, I'll like I said, we, we've got some we can bring once they do the second test. This chart I thought of using really. Just to show that, you know, when they when kids arrived this school year, the, the academic need was, was great, and that's not going to have been solved by January, even if it's great growth. Uh, that's going to take years to. to it has always been an issue. So interventions. So is that teaching the text? Do you think you give it to go over over again? No. It's, an, it's actually a computer adapted text. And so it, it actually adapts to the answers you get right and wrong. It gives you, let's say you get a, let's say you get a 12th grade te uh, test question, I'm just going back for you, and you get it That's wrong. Right you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said it in a nice way. Yeah. You, know, uh, you get a few of those wrong, it starts giving you easier questions. Questions on, on a different standard, essentially, until you start getting those right, and it finds like your sweet spot. That's how it assesses. Yeah. 
but it compares to, we, I usually compare to everyone in the state who uses this particular brand as opposed to just the brand, because I think it gives a more accurate picture or less frozen picture. Um, it, it's based on the standards, which is top four. All plugins we do as our. But it helps get familiarity with standardized testing. Which yeah, I think, think it's a benefit to have it. Yeah, this test be taken. Yeah, I yeah. think there can. Okay. If we're using the data, just in case. So the teachers are using the data. Okay, cool. Um, this does not look good at all. Um, this is something, and this was with um, the help of the interventionist. So this is taken. This is taken in the fall, so mm -hmm. the first month of um, the school year. Mm -hmm. So what we wanted to do next month for next month's meeting um, is show. Two different testing points to see the growth that happened from September 1st through the end of January. So, haven't we had interventionists that were on the grant? We've had some in the building, and there's, you know, there's where any of work, right? Yeah, there's some big work that they've been doing. Our room is big enough to meet as many as we have. Well, we could give enough intervention to have several more. But well, I mean, right, exactly. Right, right. Prior to last year, <laughs> they we had one interventionist for literacy covering seven grades, and one interventionist for math covering anywhere from seven to nine grades in a day. And that's it, that's not enough. And so that's where adding additional interventionists that are specifically dedicated to middle and high school is huge. Well, and great segue. So this is well, I mean, that's 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 which um Are you talking to SRP? yeah which levels would uh, have they been working on and, and which lines would they affect i'd love to see that um fifth grade uh reading 12 and 5. that would be you know that would be wonderful the interventionists were working there and then where you have like a 3 and 17 or 3 and 20 they haven't been working there that really gives the value of the work they had been doing yeah, but you also, Dave, you're right, up to a point, but you also have to factor in the, the, the fact that those S are hired and interventionists have not been on board long enough to have the impact of the, the title funded interventionists have been in there for a year. So there's two different kinds of, I don't want to call them, I'm just say classes of interventionists. We, that way, but we have some that have been here for a few years and then we, had, we brought a couple more on and had them. You know, they haven't been here long enough to, you know, to really judge of their impact on the kids that they're working with. Mm -hmm. so, right. yeah, that's what we're This is also a, a fall assessment that you are dealing with. Really, the knowledge they gained last year in their partial year mm -hmm. plus summer slides. Right. So you have sort of those two factors that also impact you. you were, we would hope that we would see yeah. some, some differences in the in the next round of data actually. But then all of last year we did not have a math intervention students, right? We had we didn't hire that person right. that, that position sat in the budget in grant funded with empty. Right. right. For the and secondary then, for the, for the secondary right. Right. that intervention just wasn't there. Oh, wow. We didn't make that we didn't make that higher until April for the coming year. Right. So, so that we can move to current middle school math teacher into the intervention district. There was no intervention system by grant funded Can we com right. uh, compare this to what we did in 2019? He just said there's no value in that comparison. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I can take a look at that. I think there's so many variables that are different. I would say that's totally the case. 
know, years later, years later yeah. then I'm not sure what, you know, we could go, we could look, look like at ninth you, grade and see what they did in 20, those kids. Right, your ninth graders would have been your sixth graders, so how did they do? You know, we could look at that. Well, they, they wouldn't. Right. And that's also right. right. Right, like you also need to factor in that it's not necessarily So it's a limit, I'm not sure that we're going to get a lot of actionable data out of that. Take a look, I, I didn't choose to yet, mm -hmm. especially without this first round of growth data coming in next week, next in the next few weeks. The best use for this data is to take it, see what you have, and then that's when you apply your intervention. Right. So that's when you, you target specific skills and you right. target specific groups with your intervention of We also we also used it um, this the fall data at the high school level. We looked at current 10th grade, which is a year old, they don't, they don't take it to 10th grade, they looked at current 9th grade, and we, we spent a faculty meeting kind of discussing, okay, what does this data tell us for our teaching today? And the teachers had that conversation. So it wasn't about individual kids, it's about classroom uh, at, that, at that meeting. Um, but that was a really valuable thing to hear teachers say, well, okay, so I have to remember that a number of my kids might not be reading at grade level. So I can't just give you a science article that's written for 12th graders for ninth grade reading and seventh grade level. Right. You can't. So we've had conversations like that in order to use the data to that kind of And another thing that we were really working on is the classroom research. Which is meant shifting our math program to start programs, intensive PD work in writing, and then looking at where we need to improve and what the best, what the best shift um, to make sure that we're getting the kids with them, that we're making sure that our teachers are prepared to go with our math. Thank you. And just quickly, Dave, when you said the ninth grade, we were switching kids coming in, that that kind of impact that that those kids have more needs that are coming in. It could or could it just simply means that the ninth grade students who you're assessing are not the same. Not the same reach the same time. Right. 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 Based on this test, right. and a I lot think of that that's is, that's crucial. I mean, yeah. between what happened in the sixth grade and everything that's happened until now, it's assessment. So it's yeah. This is when we start to reach. Right. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions for the principal? All right. I'll move on to the student rep uh, report, which came in. Does anybody have any questions about the student rep report? It came in really, really late. You can read it, and we can get to Thomas if we need to. Um, this is a basketball game, so he's not available to come in. If there are not, I'll move to board of business. Uh, I'll move to board of business. And so, board of business, Melissa is here, so we're ready to go on the budget. And I'm going to give it to Mike. I'm going to give it to you. Mike's going to drive. He's going to drive. Mike, so, I'm going to give it to you, Mike. Can you make him the co host? What are you going to do with Mike? I don't know. I don't know. If it, I don't know. If it's, I think so. In Thomas's report, he mentions before we move on, Thomas mentions a survey for everybody. If you could please take that. So click, click on the link to take the survey. Who's everybody? Everybody. 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 So when you click through the link, every single uh, demographic is recognized inside the survey. And you can fill out who you are, students, teachers, board members, members of the public, I think is even there. So, so. we put it in the newsletter right before vacation. I don't remember what time in the newsletter. I think he's hoping that board member is anyway. So he's looking for really, data. He's looking for data to, to work with. Sorry. All right, now Mike. Well, um, let's, let's just start. First page as a you want to big that up? Sure. Big you lead it? Big it up. Big it up. Big it up. <laughs> that's funny. All right. Hope that 
that that's still not big enough. Meanwhile, I got more seats back here. You can come watch. It's you larger. It looks like you're not full screen on your. Oh, that's possible. I think. Yeah. Is there a way to like enlarge? I'm not shy. All right. Well, now. Yeah. 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 Y
of 12 cents, combating uh, the spending increase year over year, as well as that CLA adjustment. It's helping reduce. So, good question. It's flat compared to the voter approved as of right now. But it's up by four cents. It's very well should have Right. So when we talk, when we when we mention to the voters that we have this is a this is a bunch of power four cents. This is not a bunch of flat. This is a bunch of power four cents. Power four cents. It, it is, but I really love this chart. I, I don't want to be talking out of getting rid of it. I want to be transparent so people know right. you voted on the dollar forty two. Okay. okay. I want to make sure. Okay. Okay. So. Can we first talk about the yield? The yield is up because the state emptied their coffers. That's the way I understand it. That's what uh, I mean. quite. Okay. I wouldn't quite just, it's close in concept, but under statute, the state can only retain 5% surplus in education. So the education fund is continued for a couple of years running a fairly significant surplus. It was 63 million this year. That sounds right. Right. So they hit that's so that 63 million was well above what the 5% statutory limit is on what they can retain. And so they're required by statute to plow the excess above that 5% retention back to the taxpayers and their vehicle for doing that is to adjust the fuel rate. So that's where the increase in the yield rate came from. Um, so, yeah, it's. And that will continue to, and that would happen in any year where there was a surplus of debt funding to see five percent above what's actually the priority. How many times in the last twenty years? Um, the last twenty years, I would have been doing this for years, but it's um, they ran. I know the previous year they they've been running surpluses in the education fund since the state switched the. Um, the feeds into the education fund three years ago, or maybe four years ago now. The legislature changed the allocate, took 100% of the proceeds from sales and use tax to put that directly, to take a percentage of that. He said, no, that's crazy figuring that out. We're going to dump all the sales tax revenue into the education fund. Well, pandemic hit, everybody was shopping Amazon from home. Sales tax collections went through the roof. So did liquor sales. That's another source of money for the um, And a couple of in lottery and, yeah. and things like that. And so that's generally understood to be the reason why we've been running surpluses for two, possibly three years. Again. Is that going to continue? I don't know. I, I mean, I hope it does, but I hope it's not because. Of that. But that's why it's been running surpluses and they are. They took a big chunk of money uh, for an FY23. I keep, keep my fiscal year straight. The current year that we're in, that they did to set aside for the PCB remediation, they set aside 32 million from the surplus just for that. That was a big chunk of money to be, luckily, to be sitting on top of. It may not be enough to deal with the problem, but it's nice to have it. Um, so we'll, we'll just have to see on a year to year basis if that's, if that's going to continue. Uh, Honestly, we'll have to see on a year by year basis if the legislature decides to fool around with the funding sources again. We, you know, we don't know what they're going to do. That was a, a timely gift, I, I would say, to the school districts to redirect sales tax revenue just in time to collect it all <laughs> during the yeah. pandemic, but yeah. nobody planned on it. It's just a fortuitous stuff. But I can't go back to one of these. Well, no, that was more the general. Rhetorical. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, it's probably not all that common every, every year. Um, no, it's it, it, by statute, it can't run a deficit. Right. And there, I think it, once, one year that I can remember, they actually somehow ended up with a deficit that they had to raise additional revenues to cover the de deficit mm -hmm. and get up to the 5% yeah. threshold. And that had a, a big impact on your rates. That was like 2016 or 17. Well, that's kind of the, the front end of my window over there. All right, so I have a question. Yeah. With the special ed fund that we have, yeah. there's $180,518 in it right now. Mm -hmm. We run this budget through, and there's zero. Well, it's a lot of 518. Right. What do we do next year? 
we have similar circumstances. Where is, where is, where is our emergency fund if we take it all the way this year? That's my first question. And it is pretty much rhetorical. My second question is, we have a, a, an overall budget surplus of 512,000. And if we take 300,000 of that and make it disappear, now it's half. What do we do if we have an emergency? And now it's not as rhetorical. This is, the, the, this is where, so the, 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 the budget work that, is, that has occurred to keep this at $1.42 and acquisitions is um it's a, it's a lot of gymnastics, but it's burning through our region. We're, we're, we're throwing fuel on the fire that uh, 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 stuff that we've that we kept. And it makes us less prepared for um, the fiscal cliff, which I, I think that we don't think the fiscal cliff is this year because of how much the yield is. Right. Yes, that depends on how you define fiscal it, cliff. It also depends on how you define emergency. And so right. I want to talk about both of them. So I think the second part question is fully valid. You know, 500,000. That would have a significant impact. It'd be more than that. So yeah. That's but definitely a fund you don't want to drain too much because it's the only unrestricted fund. So but if you're looking to offset special education costs, the first place to look at is that, that special education reserve because you can't use the phrase enough. And unless you go back to the voters and ask them to change the structure of that fund. That would take a voter support. That was a question I had. Are there, pol there are policies around each one of these funds? This was a, a fund that was voted on, a specially designated fund, a restricted fund. It was I think it was 2018. I think it was 17. the town meeting before I came on board. Does that sound right, or was it 17? It was a year before I got here. So 17. 17, okay. I was at town meeting. I think it was, I remember the discussion. I think it was raised by Robert at the time because something triggered it. And there was money. There was actually, there was extra money laying around. I think they actually moved money from unrestricted reserve to. This fund into the what's the other one called? Mission, mission, mission. 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 So with those two funds were set up. That was by Congress. This has been in existence for over five full years and not touch. So I figured if we're going to touch it, this would be the year. That's it. Well, we have capital projects. <laughs> well, <laughs> right. But this, but, this, but this can only be used for special education. Right. But that, that's the unrestricted. Yeah. Not unrestricted. Yeah. So that's why I said that. Second ladder of your question, I would agree 100%. If it's just an idea, remove the idea, nobody liked it. I just thought the special education reserve it has been in existence for a long time. For a moment just like this, that's, that was my idea. Are there certain um, restrictions around the amount of money, kind of the amount of money that needs to be in these at all? Or? Okay, there's no policy that says you have to have X amount. No, if it's if it, if the balance fund balance went to zero, I think it would automatically fall. Okay. All right, so make sure it's the there's no minimum. We set the rules for that fund. To be used for this purpose as much as we want. Ten thousand, hundred thousand, or all of it. So if you use all the specialized money, there would be no specialized fund to, to put money back into. Well, that's not true. So, so we could vote at a later time to do exactly what happened six years ago, which is if we get another surplus, we can vote on the right. Vote to yeah, that's you know, it's an interesting question, Clayton, because now that the fund exists, right? Like, can you leave 100 by 100? I mean, no, that should be in general. There you go. So, <laughs> I'll have them. to check on this, but I think now that the fund exists, the school board may have the authority to transfer money from restricted funds into the sub. Yeah, I, don't, I think I just I don't want to you know I don't want to swear to that, but I will look into that and see. Right. That's fairly fair. That sounds right to you too. Yeah. I would think since we govern unrestricted funds and we govern this other trend as well. Yeah. Yeah. And one, I had to make the adjustment. I used it all. I just took it all out of eighteen. Yeah. 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 Uh, you vote to you vote. retain you vote the surplus money, money. Yeah. and that goes around the yeah. yeah. But if something were major with the building were to crap out over the next, like this unrestricted fund is where we go to to yeah. fix that threat. That's one, that's one. The other one is the actual, I think it's 27,670 as part of it. It's yeah. very small. Okay, uh, no, no. Yeah, a little bit more than that, that's what. 
the capital fund is the, is the building. Right? Unrestricted is the anything you want to send it. And, but, the, but since the special ed proposal was created, we haven't touched it. So it's true. Not even going to buy it. Okay. Right. Right. There was a cost estimate that was put out there was a co principal uh, with um, Ms. Hoffman, and I forget his name. Ed Lovelace. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was an over. Who was the one who was out there? Patrick. Uh, R.E. Jeffrey. No. Right. Brooke. 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 Something R.E. Patrick Pettit? No. No. I know. That was all that work. Sounds like Mr. Renner. That's something along those lines. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, but if the Danville Works students wanted to keep the Danville Works program going, that would be an example of using that fund. Um, it would be, but that's, I, I don't think we've ever intended for like supporting things that are already going right. on. Okay. Or something, like, something that we're not doing. Something we're not doing now. That would be, that for like Tim said it really well. It would be even like the same thing. Just to what it was creation. And if we wanted to dissolve it, it would have to be approved at town meeting. I didn't know the change at all because it was approved by the bond. Right. It was approved, right? The reserve was uh, approved for that uh, for that amount. But to make any changes for it, the board would have to the town would have to vote. I believe so. If you if you're going to just change it, it won't work. But it. It's it's accessible money. Right. You know, yeah. If somebody had if somebody had something that that that, that met the mission or the vision or some sort of big idea, right. they can come ask us for the money. Yeah. Depending on how if you know, the procedure for getting to this table is followed yeah. through the leadership. So it's accessible money, but it's not accessible money for budget. Right. Okay. So you want to see some so sort of, might play with the numbers? So here is what I don't like. And I talked to you about this earlier. I don't like hanging on to that dollar forty-two so much that you burn through your reserves. I don't like I don't like spending more than a dollar forty-two. But if you want to show the voters how much this costs and you want to increase things to this degree, they need to know how much this actually costs. Not that we can sit here and use up all of our reserves to bring you back a dollar forty-two. And so, it, so what? And you're going to bring it to us live, and you're going to show me what it looks like. Then that three hundred thousand becomes zero. As big as that impact is going to be, I got to see it. No. <laughs> so it's forty-five thousand. It's forty-five. It's going to be eight cents. Forty-five thousand. Yeah. 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 How much was for? Yeah. How much yeah. was for? Yeah. 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 And there's another from endowment. There's another piece that we can talk about too that all okay. lies with cups and spend. All right, so yeah, they can't take yeah, like, it. Take it up. Oh, gee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap! I just got more. I can't. Take you know, it up. I come on. So, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a mystery. Where is your hand? Okay. <laughs> She just needs a little scam at some reason. What is this money coming from? It's not, it's an unrestricted endowment. So, the bike back to the reserve so that it doesn't have to pay endowments. No, so it doesn't. But there's a reserve page, which I've blown up on the screen. That's that 513 unrestricted surplus from previous years. Yeah, right there. So that's where it's coming from. Right. Yep, you got it. That's it. So I was taking the 300 from that 513. So now yeah, I've been asked to remove it. Yeah. And I have. I will. Do you think it's going to go up eight cents? We can't okay. see it. Trying to say it. <laughs> well, so, so this is it right here. I have a footnote. Let me just show you where I took it. It lived on the revenue page in this lovely sub block here. And I've removed it. I left the 180. Do we need a drum roll? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. where, where are we at? <laughs> uh, we are at 149. So it, it went up seven cents. Seven cents. That's step one. Yeah. Step one. Okay. So the other thing, if you, if you want to talk about this some more, or if no, it's it's right. this is this is uh, just want everybody know this is more in line with what we're actually being asked. Right. Uh, the other thing that Larry Sarah and I talked about today, which we kind of to realize together is that um, I'm not going to use names, I'm not going to get too specific about positions, but there's a retirement that we recently learned about. Uh, a teacher who is currently funded by title, and we can move one of the teachers that was, was extra funded, which was put into the local budget under that title funding. And that was a, about a hundred and call it a hundred thousand dollars. So Holy you God. can show the effect. And it, that's our total confidence. That instead of one sensor, 
got moved into local budget. Now we can move it to be covered under Title One funding because that other people are doing it. And we don't need to replace that position. We don't need to replace that position. So to show them that. Yes. Why not? Why not? Because yeah, why not? Sorry. Um, yeah. we're not going to replace that teacher entirely. There's a, there's a part time, you still have a part time extra funded uh, inter, uh, intervention. But it's not showing up in your budget. Somebody that's shared with another school. They go by the S. At the SD level, using our so, uh, what does that do? Well, it drops back down to 146, which would be parallel to what was happening in 2000. So, it was flat from 22. Let me just roll this up a little bit. Hopefully, everybody can see 146. So, it brought it back down. Looking better already. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. Questions? From the board? The equalized pupil rate is set. Like, even if, say, a lot of kids left the end of the year. Once they, set, once they set the rate, the rate, the is, rate set. is set. Now, we got an email this afternoon, late this morning or this afternoon, from the agency saying they actually released the final numbers on Friday. We're not anticipating changes, but you know we're not in the decision. I don't think we have to be in the decision point. We'll reflect in the next draft. You know, you got to tell us this is where you want to be, and then the next draft will. The CLA is set. We have the we have the deal rate. Then the final people as people number, and they will say this. You need to tell us. The direction you want to go in. From the board. I need to hear from the board. Some voters will make their decision based upon <coughs> one line. Well, if, they, if they see what? We're up almost a million? No way. And they've made their decision, and all the work that goes into this. They made the decision on one line. Other people um, will will take a look at and say 22,000 22, for excessive spending threshold. That's what the academy is, and they'll make their decision just on that one line. Well, the excess spending threshold is not a thing. So the the pure, but, the pure people. But people will make their decision for people based upon that. They'll make their decision solely on. What the local tax rate is, whether it's 142, 148, 146. And they'll only consider that one line without looking at, you know, all the work and stuff like that, the countless hours that you put in into the budget and, and discussion and, and how the formulas work. Yeah, you know, right. Dave, do you think it would be helpful if we put the explanation to why we're about? In other words, this this one page, I, I don't maybe it's too much information. I, I'm just throwing it out there to say. They're going to look at that one number. Well, here's the reason. At least 90% of the reason. Um, so, I don't know. With what's happening in the budget, that have to have anybody to question. So, uh, Dave, I think your points are all well taken. My question back to you is how is that different from any other year? Because we we have people that only look at the tax rate, we have people that look at the per pupil cost, we have people that look at the bottom line on education spending anyway. And other than trying to doing everything we can to educate the wider community about what's in this, is there some? I'm just I'm not challenging your belief because I understand mm -hmm. what you're saying. But is there something different, special about this year that makes that a bigger issue in your mind than the past? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, wanting new money to to put up a new building. It's the perception. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perception exactly. Okay. It's you gave the number of forty two hundred dollars a year. Okay. So what he's talking about here is he's clarifying that when at one of the meetings that we had, when we talked about tax implication of what it would cost extra. I asked if anybody wanted to give a number and nobody did, so I gave a number that was five. It was going to be right. on the building project 
of the, the, the first of $4,200 extra on my particular tax correct. So for, seven, for, seven, for, seven, for, seven, for one of them, for the 90, at the 91 cents, it was going to be 400 extra yeah. on my. Yeah. So, tax. and just for, for easy math, let's say uh, their taxes are going to go up $800 with, um, you know, with these new budgets. So, Five thousand dollars for uh, we can we can give you a deal and you write a check for one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Your, your taxes are paid for the next 30, 30 years. We lost it. Yeah, we lost it. I want it because it's perception. But the forty two hundred dollars is off the table. It's it's a perception. Correct. You, you think it would be helpful if the way remember when we presented the bill when we brought you, we broke taxpayers. All bonds, the bucket that would have the forty two hundred dollars, which would be income and sure. and home value threshold, but then there's three others that fall under that. I I I, I could I easily present, present this budget to say the area of four demographics. I don't think it would be. It's um so why not? Perfect. So a, a, a normal conversation with the voter is either they look at one of these numbers and make a decision, or they say. I heard you're up nine cents, and that's that's that, that's about all I go. I heard your level funds, it, that's great. I heard you're up nine cents, that's terrible. And so it's one of those. So, but that that's the extent of the conversation is you know they want to know how much taxes they're going to pay, but they're not going to want to know the details about how much taxes they're going to pay. And, and nine cents is not all of them. It's only four of them. All the rest of them. All right. I think that. That they'll be. And, and I think there is some. I think there is some value in at least trying to explain that that nine hundred that nine hundred fifty thousand dollar increase is not. How much of that is in control of the school board, and how much of it is not? I think that it's very important to, to say that building costs are up, the building operation costs are up, special ed costs are up, and we don't control those. Okay. Uh, Health care costs are up, and we don't control those. Staffing, costs, staffing are costs are up because we negotiate those with people that we care about, people that we trust. All that is all that is the truth. And I'm gonna have to write all that in the letter. So we'll get to the letter later, but we write all that in the letter. And you say to the town, we hope they read the letter. We hope they say that the costs here, the costs here, the costs here are up. And then I'm gonna have to tell them we also want to add four positions because it's an emergency. Well, because we're in an emergent situation. And we're gonna hope that we have some start out. Right. Just to be like, hey, we're going to, and so, and then we're, we're, we're going to be going with such reception. And so, a defend does his board want to go against the perception? I don't want to show him the thing this is $1.42 and we'll burn up all our reserves. That doesn't make any sense. I agree. You don't go with a dollar forty-two and say, and guess what? Everything behind us is the money that we've been saving right. for years. So, if we go with a dollar forty-nine and we say to the town, it's a dollar forty-nine. And this is what it is. And we need your help. We need to talk to you seven cents. Because it's been in the paper that it's 10 cents in this town they're fighting. And it's 11 cents in this town they're fighting. And it's 13 cents in this town. And they're, they're trying to cut budgets and fire people. If we're seven cents off of what we voted on last year, will the town support that? And that's the question for the board. I think I'll have one cents. That's addition. So the new numbers are so, $1.46. Right. So, but I don't know that yet because that, that, none of that's final. None of any of that's finalized, and that's the rest of this discussion here that, that, that we we spoke about briefly. That isn't finalized. All the the, the, the moving of the people and the ideas. You, right before this meeting, you said that, that's probably yeah, well, we'll we'll still have that conversation. So I think that that's not a thing that is finalized. So I think that what we're going to do here is the truth is a dollar forty-seven, dollar forty-nine. It's possible that we can get this to a dollar forty-six. And have these interventionists that are going to help us get these kids back in that we right. remain in rescue mode. But we can't keep these interventionists forever. That's the rest, that's the rest of it that you guys got to remember. We can't have interventionists forever because we don't have that budget. Yeah, for that. And then we have a project coming in. That's so yeah. this okay. is the question I asked you at the last meeting. I said, what is the sundown for these interventionists? And we, do you make the tough decision now? Next year, year after, 
I think we're I, I think that we're still in rescue mode, and I think I think that we can say this, I think that we can say that people know we are trying to rescue these kids, these kids, like the, the specific from grade whatever to grade whatever that that got lost in this and that they're and that they're lost. I think that, that, that we can say that we're trying to rescue them. And I think that that can be our position. And I think that we have that we can say it's going to cost a little bit more. Sure. But I don't think that we can say that forever we need interventions because we didn't have them previously. We didn't have so one of them. We didn't have mill school interventions previously. Whether we needed them or not, that's a different that's a different conversation we need to have. One of the other things that you and I talked about on this morning is that one. So there's a couple ways to look at the, the inter, having intervention staff. One of them is like, as you say, learning emergency situation. They need to deal with learning loss. And that is a, that's a longer term commitment. You just say, I'm not going to sit here today and say, yeah, we could, you know, just give me more, one more year of intervention that we want all the problems home. The other piece of this is under Act 173, we need intervention positions to stop the pipeline from Tier one instruction to tier three, which is some regular classroom instruction to special education, which is always more expensive and will continue to be more expensive than overall than dealing than, than dealing uh, with the problems before you know, detecting them early with testing and data analysis, dealing with them as they emerge in the students in real time during the school year, and then trying to keep some of those students out of special education because what the pattern has been and what the state rebelled against and what the state rebelled against in Act 173 was just a continuous, continuing increase in special education child count, the term for a head count, okay, from year to year because it was, there was this big chasm between the regular classroom and special education and it started to struggle beyond the capacity of the regular classroom. They automatically ended up in special education. Is more expensive. Okay, so I I hear what you're saying about not wanting to commit today to some period of time, but the intervention positions are an investment in saving special education costs. The problem is that I can't sit here today and say if you invest two hundred thousand dollars in interventionists, I can save you three hundred thousand dollars. I can't do that. I mean, that's not that's. What if no? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to piggyback here. Yeah. One of the things that we also want to talk about here tonight is revenue. Can interventionists help us keep our middle school kids from seeking high school education elsewhere? Are they improving our middle school to that degree to make our high school more attractive to the kids that live in town? And I don't think that's their goal. I don't think that's their goal. And the middle school doesn't fall and teach them, right? But when you think about Act 74, like this is 173, this is this is the new that interventionists can provide special exposure for that. Like that's that's a need or very interesting thing that we have to be more able to do before. Um, and so that's why there's a whole other login because it also allows you to offer interventions at different levels that reach kids more specifically rather than just saying you all need a math service, but you're all going to go at the same time to get this math service and become a math level forever. The answer might be yeah. But so now how do we, the question was you know, would interventions keep more kids? If more kids are more successful in the time in the building, in the building, then they're not gonna want to. Where are these kids leading to? Well, I don't know. Private schools. Okay, so we have to leave people right there. I don't know. And you know, it's, it's not gonna stop all off. Well, sure, but there might be some kids who aren't successful here for the right combination of reasons who they get the right combination. Intervention, right supports, or stay, as work. They just teach them, take an example of that. They come for two years, and they go to the academy a lot. Not all, not all of them. Right. So, so some of those kids will never, and some of those kids will raise to Yeah, but you know, the pipeline for, for Choice Town, the pipeline from um, the elementary school. Into the, into the private academy. Wait, we're not gonna we're not gonna combat that. Do like, you mark? Is there a, a certain date that families need to tell you that yes, they will be going outside of Danville for high school? Is there any sort of indication that 
tuition rate at 18,000, whatever it is, for any tuition kid coming in. Does the state ever change that? We It gets changed every year. There's a, I'm not going to ask Mike to explain how it's calculated. There's a spreadsheet, a, a, a set of guidelines from the, uh, from the agency for how to calculate that. And it's frankly, it's been under, under calculated in past years mm -hmm. for reasons that I don't understand. But, you know, one of the, one of the many things that Mike's done since he came into CCSU, we looked at that entire process. We were under stating uh, uh, annual, annual, annualized, annualized tuition, tuition, announced tuition for all of our district right. schools, all of our SU schools, yeah. because we weren't, we were just pulling, somebody was pulling numbers out of the air. So now 16 sounds like a good number. Yeah. But rather than saying, what does it really cost to run your right. school, why would you not charge? Tuition rates at right. least close to what it costs to. Well, that's what I'm getting educate at. Kids. You're, you, the discrepancy between the two is always increasing. The economies of scale of getting tuition kids changes. So if you're having twenty thousand dollars that we're paying per student, yeah. and we're only getting eighteen thousand per student, yeah. you know, and, and I think yeah. that when we add our capital costs at some point, that our costs are going to increase per student. We're not getting that money in. At that point, either. I know tuition should really, in my opinion, should reflect what it costs to, to run your school. Right. Then there's something called allowable tuition. Right. I'm not to get into a lot of details, but that's an important number to understand because when you submit your stat report, so we all have to put what our books are at the end of the year. Analysis based on an estimate. But we're being asked right now to announce what your 24 tuition is going to be. Once we agree on what we're going to have for a budget, I'll give the announced tuition to the AOE and, and to all of our constituents, like residents of Beecham, et cetera, all that, right? This is what it's going to be. Allowable means after you submit your final results from the previous year, the AOE comes back and says, hmm, you announced you, you were going to charge 19, but when you roll up your results, you should have only charged 18. I have to refund the money back. Conversely, within a margin of 3%. Inversely, if I've undercharged right. any resident of any town, I'm supposed to be going back and saying, hm, I, I gave you a bargain at 18, it should have been 19. I have to give you that the difference. So that's, but that's not going to the family. That's that's going to, no, sorry, I'm going to, to the towns. My bad. To the, sorry. To the, school to the school districts. So, you know, one of the, I think one of the misnomers or misunderstandings about the tuition rates that we set, parents don't care. They don't, they're not going to sit there and say, oh, I think I'll send my kid to Danville because their announced tuition rate is eighteen five or eighteen, you know, eighteen thousand dollars, and that's less than the announced tuition rate in Oxford. Yeah, don't no, care. I don't think that that's not where I'm going. Okay. Yeah, no, it's just I'm more just financial to get that viability, like school and sustainability, and what trajectory are we on with money coming in, the revenues that we have, and what we're I mean, it costs money to educate. Every student, whether took their tuition or not. And but the reason that there's a discrepancy between enough tuition and cost for equalized pupil is that there are some costs that we are not allowed to consider in thinking about the cost of education. Uh, it's, no, no. You got me. Okay, but I want. I just no, no, want you, you got me. All right. Let me know. So I'm going to ask a little bit of a question. So let's use easy numbers here. Um, for twenty thousand dollars, okay. Please give me, um, or, or just explain things that aren't you aren't allowed to charge for as part of the tuition. Transportation. We don't provide it to choice students, and so we can't rip a back like that to back that out. In the, in I the thought we did pay tuition for anything. at the we asked. We could charge. I'll pull the file. I thought when I asked the CCSU board meeting about transportation from Walden or we're driving to St. Jay. We, when, we make, when we make decisions like that, we're doing that for the convenience of the child. So we're not paying for trans to get students to our school. We're not, we are not allowed to consider the cost of that in the calculation. Right. Because we, we provided a um, 
of us to Concord to bring tuition students here. And we, what was the number we felt that we had six, right. that it was paid for, anything over six. Um, I don't remember the number that was the number of students. I know that we've always just we've been able to repurpose that bus based mm -hmm. on where we're getting those people. So we no longer we no longer send a bus to Concord. Mm -hmm. We send it to Lindenville now because there are more kids coming. Right. Right. And that area is always in And and but I don't the work that it does, the, the work that it does pay for um more than pays for the cost of store. transportation. Because you just figure right. you're getting X number of students from Lindenville or Concord or wherever the town is. It justifies the expense of sending the bus out there. Right. I think yeah. with one year, I'm trying to remember when I asked about that 18000 that we get for each tuition student, you said that the transport transportation cost when our Danville bus is going to Walden and St. J, that that 18000 is helping to pay for the, those transportation costs. The money that we get in the tuition. But we're not allowed Except the enough tuition rate, we're not allowed to consider the transportation those costs yeah. in a calculation. Okay. Yeah. That's part of the analysis. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so hold on. Here's the template. I can show the template, but, but there's okay. certain costs. I'm going to stop you. 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 I'm going to move on. The part I want to move on in the budget too is the four jobs. It's the, the four jobs that we're adding. We've talked a lot about the two interventions and the value of the two interventions. Tell me about the other jobs. Why do we need to add? Uh, why do we need to add special ed para, and why do we need to add a para to base program? I can talk about that one. Um, but you're not adding para. Okay. You are um, the connect program is always designed to run with a teacher and an assistant. Part of it is run with the that second person connect program. Okay. Assisted group offsite. That position was funded under the previous year. SR, and I understand it was good, but you're having a budget that's not on the SR budget. That's not right. So that's not, so I want to I want to correct that misnomer. That's, that's, that's a misnomer for me or for my program. There's no addition at quarter months. So this is this is a grant funding position also that's come off of grant funding. Right. And it's the person who's in the second bus that we are already paying. Second van. Second van. Oh, oh, sorry, that we're already paying. We don't have anybody now. We have never actually taken into that. Um, the first year we didn't have somebody who even had this. We never had a band. We didn't have a band, so we couldn't get to cap for them. Uh -huh. This year we have had somebody in that position, but that person has been with a student, a specialized student throughout the day, and that specialized group has provided their full salary, so we actually haven't have that, that money. I don't know where they went, but that's just, yeah. At least sitting and sitting. Yeah. yeah. Regarding the special ed pair, that's that. Can happen at any time. If you need an additional pair, it's factored into the special education cost and is rolled into that $230,000 increase in special education cost. So it's accounted for there. We're just reflecting so, 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 an additional. You have it. You anticipate that you're definitely needing this extra special ed pair. Yeah, you know so that can happen. That can it's happen not multiple a, times. It's, it's not a special ed pair. So, so, there's, so, so there's four positions listed there, right? There's, there's, there's ELA intervention, is that those are those are exactly right. career technical uh, and experiential para positions that they just spoke about. Uh -huh. right. Where it says para educator dash SES, and that says LM, it, it, we, we meant to correct that to be middle school and high school. And what that position is, is oh. the right, right. Oh. It's, the, it's the support staff, the, the support sector, the student support center. So um, we've had one person in the position. For many years, then we realized that that position needed in in you know, 13 grades, 14 grade, whatever it is, needed more than one person for many years. So this is to allow us to have two support center staff for grade right. seven. Um, it should, it, it should it, it's, it, I think it is technically private educator at the CS. Well, I'm not sure where SES is. I would do it for support. Yeah. Social emotional support. Right. And it's just middle school, school high school. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so I school support it. has three people already. Is that correct? There, there's a total of one four. for high school, two for there's a total of four. There's two for the pre-K to six. And there's this year two for grade seven through twelve. Last last year, last fall, that second position was added in like November, I think. Um, 
that's where I spent it last fall. Um, and that SR funds rolled over here this year. And so this position also is another position that was funded by grants. Yeah, yeah. We're not trying to add to that. This is a behavior. This is somebody who works with behaviors and behavior and social emotional. Oh, right. So all four of these essentially were funded by a grant and now are not. So that but that new position that I'm sure that's just yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's true. The career yeah. it's not a new position, it was it yeah, was that helps me. So this budget doesn't, doesn't, doesn't propose to add any new people. Well, that's simply four so people who already work much. here whose grants have run out. Yeah, or four positions yeah. that are already here whose grants have run out. I, I want to be clear. Yeah. I want to, this is really this is mixing words, and I want to make sure that I'm clear. It was approved to be spent under the grant, agreed. Right. The old position never filled, but right. but it wasn't filled. So as a result, it wasn't, grant funds were not used to pay for it last year. Right. That's why I'm calling it a new position because. We're using local money to to fund this position because there is no more money left in our desk. I so I think instead of your position, I think we should say unfilled position from that point to be Yes. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather you say that than yeah. say yeah. 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 It wasn't previously grand right. funded. This would be fully sustainable in three years. Okay. Oh. I mean, I so. what are we talking about? Wait, wait, yeah, wait, wait, yeah, hold on. What, 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 what's your this question? What, what, what do you yeah, say? This 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 yeah. uh, the grant that we're receiving is for how many years? Four. Four. The grants are all good. Both okay. of them? Right. One more. One more. That's the next, that's our next talk about revenues. But I don't know if you want to talk, you want to talk about that now. Sure. Tell me about the revenues that we can generate from Dave's program. Either you or Dave can tell me. And we, so one of the things that we want to talk about, and we, we want to talk about is how to, to be more sustainable, we need to bring in more tuition kids, even despite the, what we spent the last year doing. And one of the reasons that we all agree with Dave's program to, that we want to support it and that we fully support it, and the last one fully supports it, and I think this one fully supports it, is because we can find children in the other town who could benefit from hands-on learning where there isn't any in grades seven, eight, nine, and 10. That's exactly right. So there are students, just like we have uh, Daniel resident students who do not, who learn better in an experience of hands-on learning environment. There are students in other, in St. John's Ferry and in the East districts that have the same need and would benefit in the same way from that kind of instruction. And there is no other program like that. Often, Kingdom East does not have a high school, neither does St. John's Ferry Council, okay? So these are, we're talking about uh, in, inviting kids in from other districts that can benefit from that kind of a learning experience, okay? When, and we also talk about it at the retention. There's a retention yeah, program for all seven eight. I don't know. The primary goal, but it's it's much more attention. I think we are. The second we are not tuition seats at all. That's a that's a fun Yeah. Yeah. It's actually a, absolutely a big piece visiting all the eight We've got a number of different approaches. But, so yeah, the goal was to change the culture of the conversation around hands on learning to support your students and So so today we've had some conversations with Superintendent. He has kids in her district that are, are in the wind right now, that are not settled in the school and they can't find a learning environment that, that meets it. We have a possibility, and we're going to continue the discussion next week of bringing some of those kids in this year. Um, and then we're looking potentially at you know, maybe up to a dozen kids just to for next year. Can we, can we put them though? I guess that's where I'm, I'm trying to make this the numbers work. 
the shop, like the only place, the shop in the year, that's the only place in this building we have space. Somebody's going to have a shop this summer. The shop has space. It's been a long time doing it, too. I think it's a gym. I'm curious. When you're a comedy, both what kids in your focus. So here, so the question is, the question continues to be about what school haircuts. Tonight we're going to talk about a new staff member. It's going to be the same week because then I don't have to do this. Because when you're focused on, you know, seven, eight has been a decent one. Just to, to clarify, we're going to talk about a staff member to be hired well, in a budget of position. Of right. The local budget position. Yes. Um, well, yes. Yeah. So yeah. Budget position. The local budget position has been there for a Change the time. Great. <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyway, back up to the answer to this question. Um, um, please. As that from as, as as that role takes hold, that person becomes globally funded design tech features that you've always had. That gives us more room to expand alternative programs. That gives me more room to focus on middle school, and it gives us more room to yes, we have to place people if we do it as a true alternative program outside of the school day, but outside of the truth of the schedule that is a morning and afternoon cohort of ten students each. That works. Um, the shop will become the next space battle because it's not. Your question is going on, and there we talk about surveillance, shop, and alternative work, and traditional public trades classes. Hey, we've done it for you know, we've, 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 we've got a year. Uh, we've, we've, got, we've, got, we've got the trails, we've got the vans. A proposal for a year to point out. That's what I think. Shop your. I want to shop your. But they have to be enrolled in a traditional program, so currently fit. Everybody can fit with that, too. Right. We'll make everybody can fit, and some people would say go back into afternoon classes. If it's a half day, two cohort program. Then yes, there's there's room for this. Um, there's you know it's a juggling act, and I don't want to say oh yeah we're fine with space because we're not. But yes, we can accommodate more students and make it work. Um, and then the money in the mass, the money coming in from those students, but it costs money. Right, it's not free money. You know, it's going to cost money to educate traditionally as well. So it's a the money coming in, I guess the numbers I'm trying to figure out where for your for that program to make it sustainable, how much more money needs to come in to sustain it actually. So the just just to clarify, the position team handle works all except for Mr. Schilling are already in the budget. Right. The Dandel no. Connect the Dandel Connect is in the budget, is that correct? I don't think no. Mike Weiss. Mike Weiss. Still Ezra. Is he still Ezra? One more year. Well, the tech ed teacher for sure is in the budget, in the budget. But in the local budget. And the program assistant we are hoping will be in there. So if I can try to answer so, Molly's question, if that's all right. So yes. the tuition savings didn't exist. Okay? Let's pretend that's not even on the issue of the table. We have students in the school that the benefit from that total construction. So I think that yeah, my my very strong feeling is that we have a we have a, a, a legal and a moral obligation to meet the needs of our students where they are. Okay, so some subset of our students need that kind of instruction. We we would need to spend money to provide that kind of instruction. Some money to spend that kind of instruction. Now you look outside of the the bounds of this building, outside the bounds of this community, and there are other students who can also benefit from that. Those students. Come with eighteen thousand dollars in the back pocket. That's where I'm getting stuck because okay. that to me doesn't seem like too much, very much money. That in terms doesn't of, screw, that's two hundred sixteen thousand dollars. But when we're talking about adding on to the the pupil cost with a with a capital Most project, of. at that point we're not going to. I'm saying at some point I'm guessing we're going to have a capital project. I would hope. Yeah. And, okay. and, <laughs> and we're and and we'll have more money that we're spending per pupil with that that we're not getting from tuition students so i'm just trying to understand financially the, the capital costs let's say the town passed the bond tomorrow okay the cost of that bond does not factor into your cost into your regular budget it doesn't right. no, I it know doesn't that. raise the cost okay. per equalized pupil okay but it's, we're still paying for it as tax we're paying for it as taxpayers right. Right. right the point i'm trying to make is mm -hmm. that if we are if we're committed to meeting the needs of our danville students which we have an obligation to do. This is an opportunity to bring in additional revenue from others, from other towns that are just going to write us a check for this 
come in here and benefit. And anytime you add students like that, you're increasing the revenue. It's what happens today. The tuition students that we take in today, uh, right. the numbers fell off a little bit this year, but we were bringing in, what was the number? Close to $800,000? That was the high end of it. The high end. We were bringing in as much as $800,000 of tuition from choice students from other communities. There was a revenue item that, that you know, the town never paid any taxes on that. If those kids weren't here. Right, the, right. Right. Yeah, no, I get that. And it is kind of a economy of scale. We can actually serve our kids better because we have more students here. Right. But I'm just struggling with that discrepancy of the rate that the, the, the tuition costs that we're talking about per equalized pupil and the amount that we're getting and then the amount we're going to pay for a capital project. That's where I'm, it would cost money to educate these kids that are coming in and not for the money. So it's you know, it's it already seems like it's a small it's amount. Not, but I would argue that it doesn't cost. Yeah. That's that's yeah. how I tend to explain to people yeah. is that person who comes in and with their eighteen thousand dollars in their back pocket to learn here sits down in a seat that would otherwise be empty. Yeah. Right. And they sit down and they diversify our room even just a little bit. And they fill in our sports teams and they do whatever they add to the they add to the culture yeah, of the place. No, I get the benefit for sure. And, and I so but I, we, we can't we can't, we can't then make them pay for our bill. Right. You can't no, make I that town pay for a building, yeah. and that's that's where you're hung up. That's I'm where you're saying sustainability and the financial viability of this format. That's legitimate concern. Mike, what's the name of the here? The one that we gave to everybody. Sure. Yep. This is a different thing. We're just learning about. Yep. Sorry. I'm trying to get that answer. Okay. And I think that's um. What secondary? I think that's yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, secondary. Yeah. So 18. But this year, if we would have if we would have passed this budget as it presents it right now with the yep. modifications we just made tonight, yep. just to be clear, it, we would be I would be presenting, I would be suggesting a, a number that looks more like uh, twenty one thousand. Or one thousand four hundred. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, why why would we not charge right. tuition to right. other districts yeah. if our cost to educate is twenty one four hundred? Right. Why right. would I not? We're not legally allowed. To. I think that it. so. it's just where we're at, and it's frustrating and it's unfortunate. It's just how do we right. carve a path forward so that it's we're not yeah. predicting it. You know. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at just tuition numbers. Um, we're looking at between thirteen and fifteen tuition students paying. The salaries as proposed for the community based learning program and my salary. My salary is not, you know, that this is a that's a two-year discussion piece. That's not something that we the goal was to get the thing up and running. Whether or not that's something that is long-term budget is something, you know, that doesn't have that's a switch of conversation. Yeah. Um it's, and it's it's very well it's very well made that it's my position is not as I intended it or not either, um, or funded differently. These are all things that could happen. But, but with the program as it stands, with the community based learning instructors, the community based education, we're looking at what you do. Um, covering all the costs. Covering the costs completely. Not even talking about costs. Yeah. Yeah. If it, the, the sustainability question you're saying we can pull 20. I'm saying we can pull 20. So when there's revenue gains, and you just talk about adding 12. Right. right. To, to get up to that 20. But David, but, that the full taking the full right. 18 for each student for your program and not applying any 18 to personal learning. I'm just talking about what 18 about what just no. 18 for if, if you ask how many tuition students fully fund the program, that's the answer. Okay. Um and yes, there needs to be at, some at of that. the 18 though. At the right. 18. How many would it be at the 20? 13. 15 of the 18 and 13. Sorry. Um so right, that's and, and that and that's a discussion we have next year too about the whole fiscal budget. Um the question about sustainability right now is a big one. But the answer is without the tuition students in high school, even back all of my stuff out, pretend I never existed, pretend I never existed, the bands could go away, the shop was moved. You still couldn't, you still couldn't fund the high school at its current level without the tuition students. Right. And that's right. that is such a piece of this. And that's the part, that's the part that's scary to me is that vulnerability of not knowing, it's always been the case, you know, how many are coming in and how many are going out. And I think that's the part where we now have the capital project looming over head two that adds to that stress. Um, that's where that's coming from for me at least. I think that 
you know, and I've heard this, I've talked to people in the community this, you know, about the, the capital project. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't have this ball. I don't know what, if that's going to happen or when it's going to happen. But that can't be a reason for us not to meet the needs of the students in Danville. And, and like it or not, Danville is the only school in the region that is in a position to offer that kind of experiential learning because you know, the, the academies are not going to do it. They're just, they're not, they don't believe in it, they're not going to do it. They, they, don't, they have a different perspective and mission on how they educate. It's not a shot at them, it's just a different perspective. Okay? So, you know, if this, if these programs aren't here, if this high school isn't here, I don't know what happens to not only some, not only to those students, but to some of our students. You know, and I think what, you know, I would encourage the board to continue to focus on is what's right in front of us on a year to year basis and we know what the needs are. And we know that, and I haven't even, by the way, I haven't even talked to St. John's very seriously about it. Uh, about what they're seeing in terms of, of kids you know, the town school there. That's the exact same problem. Okay, so those are the two two big choice districts next next door to us. And they're and, and Karen Conroy is saying the same thing to me conversationally that Jen Box is doing is just pushing a little more not in a bad way, just pushing forcefully. Like I I have some real numbers. I have I we can talk about real kids. St. John's Bird's not there yet. Okay. So Do we have something that we can present to students at wherever you're on the recruit? We have recruiting everywhere. Um, this is our program, a nice, a nice handout that they can. We have a book, a new book that's not very big. It's very current. Slideshow that's even more current. Um, we presented that to uh, Mr. Fisher, Simon Fisher. Kidney's High School Fair, St. Johnsbury School. Do we have a book for the next meeting? I can go grab that and go put it in your office. They're in my office in the lower cabinet. Oh, that happened. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we have these. They're pretty nice. Very uh, good. Okay, so what can we charge for tuition? <laughs> this is my, my I just so so our whole transfer is like this this change the process of my attention. So by doing these few adjustments that we just did, um, I went back and I looked, what did I what did I build my revenue model up? You go to the revenue page, right? Everyone's got the revenue page. That's so seven. put it up on the screen so we can have we have a couple of people. Sure. Please. Yes. So when I when I build this bad boy, right, I have to assume how many kids and what my tuition rate is going to be. And I used only a 750 increase from last year. Mm -hmm. The original numbers show 18750 in full transcript at 40 kids. That's how I get to 750 thousand in tuition revenue. But now that we've shaken out this budget. I can, and this was pretty close to what we, what we think we're going to present to the town to vote on. Why would I not use a rate that's right. more in line with what it costs to educate? So, with the changes that you've asked me to make so far, the cost per student on this page, oh, hold on, I got I to gotta go back to the original. Sorry, because this makes everything lie. So, hold on. So, this is Molly's question. If we say it costs 21000 to educate a kid, yes. we can build $71,000 to educate a kid. And that's what we're not saying. bound to build them 18, 18, 18. No, that's not, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true either. No, we can't charge. Oh, yeah, we have to back out certain things. We have to back out certain costs that are attributable right. to having the students in their school. Correct. So, so I, you know, unless we're going to send out full busing service to all the communities and send schools, and even then, I don't think you can do it. So I so, think that that's why they want you to do it. I don't know so the number that we could. So 21400 is where it is right now. I don't make any adjustments. That's going to cost educated me. With the adjustments you told me to make today, not touching tuition rates for allowable tuition, it's 21400 We can charge something greater than 18750 I just don't have the exact number yet because we haven't finalized the budget. But I could put in 20000 or 21500 after reducing those transportation and other costs, 
and get it, and it will help the tax rate. My whole point. Yeah, we can, we can look at that for next. Uh, we'll, we'll move on. So, where we are right now is we have an explanation of the four positions that are being added. We're all created by the positions that move on. We have an explanation. We have some clarification on why we're using the special ed money. All we can use it for, our situation is dire there. We are taking back the spinner dollars in um, extra budgetary spending from our reserves, and we put it into cents on the budget to show the town. Yes. And we're at a stopping point, although we have another thing that might come up where if you get the questions answered correctly with the teaching staff, and you might have somebody retiring, and it's possible that that money can move around and summer can be lower. You do have somebody retiring. And you do. Right. Know that that, that the people will say yes to moving to the job. And, it, and it, that we can make these changes and we can go. And so, and right now we're at about 149, it's potentially 146. Those are the numbers that we're going to stew on until we start our next meeting. Right. We're not going to act on this. Mm -hmm. we, well, we can't because this number changes, this number changes. Right. So if we can clean up some of these numbers and figure out, and the, I think that one of those numbers was the equal, the finalized equalized people number is still not here. Right. So it'll be a Friday, and so we're, we're going to be setting a meeting here pretty quick with everybody to take a look at these numbers again. But we're going to get another quarter, take another crack at this budget, and it's going to be a lot more um, real looking as opposed to using about research. Yeah, because I, I think that's what we are. And what I'd like to do now, if you can, is move on. Anybody have any, any reason we shouldn't move on? You don't want to talk about this anymore? All right, moving on. And what I'm going to move on to now is a, this is going to be a simple one, and this is good. This is regional high school choice for the school year of 2023 2024. And do you want to tell them or need to tell them? I, don't know. I can cover it if you want. Uh, Go quick. So yeah. we participate in this program, and Danville participated for years. Um, it's, a, it's a statewide program, it's, it's revenue and expense neutral. And the last kids that apply to uh, it's, uh, starting for grades 19 through 12. They, they can apply in eighth grade to start the next grade year at another public high school anywhere, and technically anywhere in the state, they can just stay regional. Um, you've got, uh, you have students here at, at Danville right now that are here on Floyd and Cabot. Mm -hmm. um, and Cabot does not give us any money for those that um, But so far, no students, are, no students from Danville have asked to leave Danville. Yeah, in recent years, not in recent years, uh, not uh, more trouble. Students. Yeah, students, what happens is that the student uh, puts into the lottery and gets chooses to come here and gets accepted because they met the lottery threshold, then they get to stay until they graduate. I can't put them out. Okay, so they're uh, they're, they're called continuing students until they graduate or until they can opt out and say, I don't know. But otherwise, they're here. So, Danville's traditionally set the thresholds at five incoming students and five outgoing students. Uh, that's a little under what the maximum numbers could be, but I don't recommend that you change to that. I think favor of continuity. Uh, Danville and Coolfield do 10 and 10, but in five and five, I can't have it in do 10. Um, I think five and five works for Danville, recommending to the board that you. Approved participation for the 23 24 school year. And, um, and if you're amenable to that, I would also recommend the motion that you authorize to sign the form on the behalf of the So, does everybody understand what's happening on this one? Any questions? Any questions from the public on this before I go put some action? I mean, I make the motion. Okay, so Tim, Tim's making the motion. Tim, what's your motion? Make the motion that. Regional high school choice for the school year 2024 and that market is five incoming and five outgoing. Five. And then Mr. Tucker is allowed to sign the form on our behalf. And I got a second on that. So, thank you, sir. Any, more, any questions again? One last time. Anybody? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> Knock one out, guys. All right. Now, the next one. 
All right, now the next one is from me. This is um, just, a, just a quick one. I can do this on my own, but I'd like to give you guys input on what we're gonna do next Thursday for the new building um, committee agenda. So I was, um, it's Wednesday, it's Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, it's Wednesday, 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 Whatever day the 11th is, is the day that it's happening. And so on the 11th, we're going to have a committee. I pointed to a couple of people that were going to they were going to come in, and they said, put me on the committee. And I said, come to the meeting. We brought to those people in, because I don't think we're putting people on the committee because it's a committee of the board. So do you guys want, if somebody shows up to those committee meetings and says, I want to be on the committee, to add them nominally to the advisory would still exist in some capacity. Is that a place to put these names because they can't be on the committee because the committee is a committee of the board. That's my first question. I got more. Um, my second question is, do you have agenda items for the first meeting or do you think this is going to be a free-for-all slash airing of grievances? No. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be free-for-all. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be free-for-all either. My next question was, Molly knows a moderator. That, that might come at some small cost that might help us moderate these meetings and sort of keep our focus rather than have to constantly defend what's going on and keep order. Do you want to look into the possibility going forward of using a moderator at these meetings? Yes. More of a facilitator. So a facilitator. To help the board to think about these conversations, a plan forward and facilitate. Do you want that person at the first meeting? You want Molly to reach out to that person so that she's there at the first. I haven't checked with the person. Uh, so there's another person. <laughs> 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 okay. Is that, the something, next is that <laughs> something we should be doing? So if we can't get that person at the first meeting, we don't really want it to be soon to be for all. Um, I'm going to talk to Rob tomorrow. Rob Valaday, he may have some input to share as well for what, for what it's planned on. I want you guys to know about that. Um, do you want at the first meeting to include the condition of the HVAC system and the ERU units? Because it seems like, and then how subsequently how the condition of the ERU units and their need affects the condition of the roof and how the condition of the roof and the ERU units ties back into the condition of the electrical system right off the bat. Yeah. Because I think that is a pressing concern yeah. that you can't do one without the other without triggering the, the the uh, fix and, and all all three or four of those, depending on how you count, are in scope for the USDOE grant and will be part of the okay. concept letter that hopefully they'll say yes, you're going to apply for an application. Okay, so can I ask the principal there to have something put together with the facilities director, if you could, and make sure the facilities director can be at the meeting to talk about the energy recovery units and the book. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just so you want so you want to have something for the group. The, the I, I don't need to have, I need to have that necessarily bothered up. I, I know. I, I I mean I just need for it to be known that the, that the energy recovery units yep. are pressing. Yes. And that the roof then becomes pressing because of the energy recovery units to replace can't be held by the roof currently, and then the strain that gets put on. The electrical system in the 37 building, it, it may not hold enough power to not kill itself with the new energy recovery units. And how that yeah, all works. It's, it's so this is the, the situation that we're in is that they, it doesn't matter that we want that, that, that we're, we're taking a new tactic, the situation remains the same. That's what I would like to just, just, just to make clear. So I can work on an agenda for that. What do you guys think about setting up a separate committee group? Other than the advisory group, or do you want to add community members who want to be involved to the advisory? You mean like the committee, the new committee? The new committee is a board committee right. and can only for, contain board members. You want to do a new, another advisory group? No, I, I, I don't know what to do with people that walk into the building and say, I want to be on the committee. Because I can't. So, so we have people that are on the advisory group that want to return and continue to work. You also have seats that are, are vacant, and um, can it, I, it'd be nice if, if those people came back. But if they don't come back, to fill them with somebody that's interested 
in participating. Whether they do or don't, do, do we think the advisory group can accept new members? And do we think that the appellation, you are a member of the Danville Building Advisory Group, is enough for people that, 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 that want to sit with the committee? That's up to the group. That's how we left it before. Up to the what advisory group? Yeah, we left it up to people whether they want to come back. Okay. Here, we're wondering, Clayton, if we're opening up the subcommittee up to others. I know that we're opening up to right. other members and we're going to welcome in some other community members, right. but we can't put them on the committee. Okay. Because it's a committee of a board. Do they think that they can? I don't know what they think. I think that the law committee said that. I yeah, think. that was sorry. I'm, please, I, I, please, I, I, I'd love you to chime in. It was my impression that it was be sort of the idea was that like the committee would be the board plus whoever from the advisory was coming back. It is news to me that the yeah the advisory group is essentially yeah essentially considered disbanded. Um, I hope so. Not. In that case, like that's fine. I mean, if that's, if that's what you want to do, but that that is not what. So I this is what we're talking about. This is this is all that we're talking about. I'm, I'm sort of opening this up to everybody. Can community members get on this committee and get a vote? Yes. No, we are the only ones that because it's a subcommittee of the board. We're the only only the board members, a form of the board members that can vote. So if you put somebody on the committee and they're a non-board member of the committee. Right, they're getting feedback essentially in brainstorming. Well, that's why okay, that wasn't clear to me. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I apologize. I thought, I thought it was there. Well, I thought because we had the whole board that it was. But so, so in effect, then, I mean, there is, I mean, at that point, you're worried about semantics. Uh, right. And there, this is, this is. More just a continuation of the of the board's students. Uh, right, right. It becomes: Do you want to sit at this table, or do you want to sit back there? But because your role is the same. Okay. Yeah, I wonder if one way to look at this is that you have the board. We're all three. We've got at least three, members, <laughs> three, four, or five board members today, and you've got other people in the community that are weighing in with advice. Not, you know, hopefully not revisiting and going back to day one every time you um, But when it comes time to make a formal decision, those non-board members do not cannot vote. But right. they can advise, yeah. they can and they can influence and they can help to guide the direction or the decision making of the board. But at the end, just like now we have members of the public and, and a board being chair. But when you're taking action, they don't get to raise anything. But that was my understanding. That was my understanding of yeah. the structure reform, where they're part of the committee, they're on it. But when it comes down to a vote, like they're at the table, we're talking. Yeah. But if it comes down to a vote, only the board members legally can vote to, to make to make the decision. Right. But, right. but let's say you have ten uh, ten um, mm -hmm. community members, and you've got nine out of ten say we want to do this. That needs to hold a lot of weight when the board members say. But yeah. at the end of the day, you're not yeah. bound that. Right? No, we're not bound, but, but you're going to listen to the people that are going to fine. Other than you have to live here. Right. Sorry. This is, I just wouldn't call this a separate committee. This is right. this is just a specialized board. Like, this is, there's, I mean, that's what it is. I mean, we're, we, the public, are sort of welcome as we're welcome here. Here, I'm not part of the board. I'm still. Right in my mouth. So, um, you know, um, I'm I'm happy to, to have that. But yeah, I would not I would not uh, advertise that as a as a separate committee that is considering this. This is this is the school board on a very focused um, uh, project. I, I mean, I'm happy to continue. To come in, I mean, more we, we We're back in the same thing because they're already called so, a committee. I, I believe my, my understanding, correct if I'm wrong, is you can have a subcommittee of a board with a structure and have community members join that committee, although the voting is the way it is with a quorum of the board members. You can you still have a committee that is the subcommittee of the board and allow community members to be part of that group, is my understanding. Correct. Am I right about that? But they can't vote. But they can't vote. And that so means this goes all the way back to when we got our first bit of legal advice. It's like, what's the, what's the, what's the difference? Like what's the, 
So we want to make people feel respected, and we want to not go back to square one every time with the same battle. But well, they can't vote. We, yes. we don't want we don't want uh, twenty professionals feel like we're micromanaging because we you know, we will only accept this answer. You know, you have to. You know, there's some fantastic people with fantastic ideas, and, and maybe option one, two, and three. Maybe there's something better. But I, I don't know. Okay. Like, but like I said, my, my point is, is like I don't I don't understand the difference that will be between Wednesday and today for me in this chair. Um, uh, that said, I'm also happy to facilitate it. Um, yeah. um, uh, obviously, there you go. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, I just, I don't understand the really that, that distinction or that difference. And so I think that might be confusing for folks if, if that were the case, because um, yeah, it, it's just, it, I know, that if like you tell a whole bunch of people, oh yeah, all right, you're on the committee, um, but you have no decision making power of what we're actually going to recommend. Um, mm -hmm. That it just okay, great. Like I mean, I can come and voice my opinion. But it, 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 I, I feel like getting a you know a little a little name tag with the star sticker. This bill kind of faces what we told you to talk about Bernie. All right, so we told the advisors we can't talk about anything, but so. Can you, Eric, can you sell this? Can you sell the concept that this is they have a role in giving good advice to the board to the main like this? I, I think, attract people with that. So that people find out. I think there are very reasonable people that understand that the situation has not changed. The situation has not gone on. Um, that we are uh, extremely educated about the current situation and, and some of the options that, that we have available to us. Um, and that we still need the help, and I think they're still still very uh, engaged and willing to to learn their expertise. But um, yeah, so I I don't think that they will that those folks will necessarily run away, regardless of of that. I mean, I'm to speak for myself. I'm I'm not going to run away. It's it, to your point. There's still a problem. <laughs> it still needs to be discussed. It still needs to be thought through, and I'm happy to. Um, lend my perspective on that, uh, but uh, I, I think that you will um, you, you could you will certainly uh, uh, run into some some sack about community engagement uh, uh, from from potentially folks that that may not have the full picture in, um, just, uh, and and getting bits and pieces of this um, uh, outside of this room. Uh, because uh, as you know, Dave and Melissa knew from being there, like those those are very long and, and very deep, thorough discussions about these these things and about what what um, the actual problems were. And uh, so so I'm not sure that um, that just sort of giving it up the outcome beneficial, not necessarily for the people that are still engaged in the committee, but or in the advisory group, but uh, for for the town. Of my fear, I think, is we've lost some trust and we've lost some, and again, it's about perception. And so I don't know how we get that back with the structure that we've now put in place around that. Um, I think a facilitator will be, not even a facilitator, but somebody, yeah, I guess a facilitator to help us sort of think about things in, in the right way will help. But again, I think, I think we're going to find a lot less people are going to come back to the table now. I think the voting would make does make a difference if they not that we're gonna change it necessarily, but would that does that make a difference? I mean the voting mm -hmm. power Eric if I if I can cut in here. So what the subcommittee is gonna do is they're gonna make a recommendation to the board, right? And we're not gonna decide it at that meeting like on the eleventh. So if so if um every member on the committee, whether it's board or community, had a vote. You can vote for a recommendation to the board, and then the board just that, that way it's passed up to the board at our board meeting, and we decide. However, yeah, whether we, that's legal. So I don't know. I also don't know that they they need to vote on what to recommend to the board because there's going to be a sitting. The, there. There. Yeah. the board is there, yes. and so I mean the the the, the need for that sort of disappears because what we committed to by making it a committee is 
regular board member attendance and informed decision making. Um, you know, and, and not to say we weren't that before, but certainly I, I am not as educated about this as all those people who sat through every one of those meetings. But your action items aren't warned. So you can't take action on them. Okay. We don't have action items on that agenda. And we, if right. we, if we gave that action items, we them. That way they can make a recommendation to the board. This, this has been the gun gun on our board. The meeting has to be warned. Yeah. So we don't. I think that another option is we go forward as our board meeting to join as Eric said and share their opinions and look at another tool for communication to make sure we're here to help people, whether it's a survey or we need to hear from people, please, we need to feel included and we need to find a way to do that. I think the, the way that we had it in the past would, would have been a good sort of one too of hey, the group has made this recommendation, now we can go out to the community and sell that recommendation because we know XYZ. Here are the reasons that we chose what we did. Um, even if that uh, uh, choice might seem sort of crazy, you know, out of space um, or not. I mean, that we, we chose what we did, uh, uh, you know, because we were sort of limited at that point. But um, yeah, now that we've sort of taken that away, I'm not sure that we can go, we can put that toothpaste back in the tube and, and set that structure up, up again. So um, yeah. But but I think you know for for as far as sort of the, the agenda goes, I mean having um, uh, some resetting of expectations of, of where we are, and then uh, some of the, I think that's the, a good agenda item right there. The update of of uh, what's going on with the HVAC and uh, ERC units. Uh, well, I, I don't fully understand that stuff. So I'm kind of interested to hear more about it. Um, but um, yeah, then then uh, going going from there. Uh, All right. So you'll see in the next couple of days here an agenda for that, and we'll walk through whatever challenges we have. And on the agenda, one of them will be the reset next And we'll be on the eleventh. So you can see that in the next next day, probably. I'll work on that tonight. You have to warn five days. I'll work on that tonight. And that will be set up for for yeah, well, everybody. Like somebody said, I don't, I'm not confused. I'm going to be playing. 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 i I don't know that I could commit to that because I've got strict board. We're well, moving on right here. So, Mark, I'm moving on. All right. Um, on the three current building proposals, I sent in, in the course of meeting planning, I sent um, to each of you a question. Do you want to settle this now? And if you do, can we please look at three current meeting proposals? I don't want to talk to you about a potential motion, but I have written down here. Okay, let me find it just a second here. Okay. Consider, I would like you to consider the following action on the three building proposals. As you know, um, in the absence of state and federal funding, the Danville School Board, this is it, the Danville School Board should set aside the three building options that we previously considered as being too expensive. For the test. That is what I'd ask you to consider right now. If if at some point the, the, the state changes the way that they fund these projects and money comes available, some sort of matching funds or some sort of something, or federal money comes available in a similar way, then perhaps these projects can become more viable. But currently, does anybody care to consider that motion? What about for the new American school? Yeah. That's that's not that's not targeted at building a school. That's not new building, but that would be federal funding. They're looking for a motion. I'm saying, but like because we, we because we talked about this, we talked about these three options being too expensive. We need to formally set them aside so that when we reset our expectations next week, those three options are a closed business. And the way that but you can't, I mean, they don't have to they don't have to be gone forever because if the state changes their funding, 
it's possible that, that, that one of those would be viable. Why do you even have to do that at this point? I thought the discussion was to People keep asking. We said that. All right, at the last. Hey, I'm going to go back to the back there. When you're talking about making the current 70 million or that generic amount off the table, I think as a public person, you say, wow, that's huge. I mean, it, it's only perception. You don't have a final number. And even though you've thrown some numbers around at the meetings before, you say, we just can't do it right now. And if the state does, I mean, we need to do something. Yes, there's no doubt that somebody needs to do something, but, but I don't know how you, you know, I mean, what would what would it take to bring it back to the table? I mean, you wouldn't want to bring it back in two months or three months, but I mean, is there a, some way of doing that without, you know, sticking a stick in your, in your heart and say, well, I've got to follow my sword again now because we reinvented it. I don't know. I mean, or the state says, oh, we've got so many million, it's only going to cost us, I don't know, a third or two thirds or whatever the project was. It sounds like a, something that we could do now. People might be interested, but right now at 70 million, I mean, I, I mean, I talk about in my own mind, you know, my taxes already are at a certain level and I really don't want to go out and get a job. But, Sure. 60 plus. I mean, yes, I could work and I'm able, but I'm, you know, I'm doing a self business and I'm giving away stuff. I'm not making any money, so I'm not helping the situation any. So, mm -hmm. yes, I mean, if if the perception is that hey, everybody we talk to is concerned about the, the taxes going up, you know, is there some way of mitigating that with the town? And that does make an interesting option. Now, you as the board have to decide that. That's not. Yeah, you know, my decision. Thank you. Sure. So, at the last <clears throat> advisory group meeting, we wanted to call it. Yeah, we called it for That was important. So, in that last discussion, it was very clear that there's no, there's no sentiment for any of those three options. I thought what the decision coming out of that was that we're opening up to consider other alternatives. I, I think the perception to say, well, we're just going to, we're going to close out those three options will make it hard, if not impossible, if to bring those back. I don't think you have to do anything more at this point than see if there is a cheaper way to get to where we need to get. And and I continue to think that close, especially closing out the make good option is not going to be. Make good options, but one of the three options. So I think that's the clarified. Oh, okay. So let me, let me clarify the three okay. options. The three options are the original proposal, which is option one, the modified proposal to have a cafetoria is option two. That was 16 million. And the third option is the new school building over here. None of those options are the make good options. The make good option is not one of the three options that was okay. ever allowed to be considered by can the I, advisory. Wait, can I clarify it? So yeah. we have option one, build an elementary, elementary up there. Yes. yes. And renovate. And and, and the full renovation. full renovation. Option two, still an elementary back there. Still over there. Nope. nope. Built bus, bus, bus loop. Little extra in the bus, loop. bus loop and renovate. Off the next one. Very tight. Very tight. Similar, right? And then option three is And so, in the absence of state or federal funding, <laughs> those three options, this board has been too expensive. Move on, not the maker. I think it'd be important. I think it'd be important <clears throat> um, to, to spin it as um, we realize that these three options might not be the solution and make a public statement that um, we are looking at other at other options. Would you like to make a statement? I'll make a motion. Take it. That the board uh, offers a public statement that we are not restricting our options as the three that were presented. We're open to other options. Okay. 
might be even more bold than that. The space of conversation center, people are really fuzzy about where the board is at with those 70 million and over options that they're like, are they still on the table? Are they not on the table? Why can't you just go to the next meeting and say, we're, we we agreed that we're going to look for alternatives to the to to the uh, to the options, you know, the, the 60, 70, 75 million. I think that would attract people if if they knew that we're not here to discuss one, two, and three, and right. that's it. Right. I think so. But if you if, if she has a great yeah. idea, yeah, that's the mentioned. Yeah, you just set it aside and you're not abolishing it. Bring it back. Because that's not since we just went down sixty thousand dollars off the study. Right. Right. Yeah. So you're setting aside those three to entertain more financially viable options. Yeah. Which way? Which way to go? So do you want to take action? Do you want to take action? I think we should take action. I agree. I think making a statement now will attract people to maybe the board's. The board says it's going to be. I'm just on the agenda. I'm not going to do it. I'll retract my motion. Yes. Yeah, and I'll let you say it. Okay, I'll be looking through a whirl. All right. Let's see. So I move. I move, <laughs> I move to um, set aside the building options. How are we going to wear this? We that are, that are over by the 60, building advisory group. That were previously considered by the building advisory group. That are over sixty million dollars. Options one, two, and three, which is a rent. Uh, I have to get into all that. No. Right. In um, right. Until there are re are financial resources available to discuss them, and continue, and we can con and we'll continue conversations about more viable options to address our needs. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to get that? Just like that one? She's going to write it up. So it's I'll really... look off the, I'm definitely off the. Can you look for that one? Second <laughs> motion on the table. I have a second for the motion on the table discussion. To allow a facilitated brainstorm, like if there were sort of. No, that's all no. I think that's all already pre established that we're going to do that. <laughs> Or maybe that could be like what Eric said, those established rules and what we're going to do at the next meeting, talk about that could fall into that, I guess, too, more of a procedural. Yeah, I think you just need to say we're setting those aside. Yeah. I think we've said I'm I'm tell, by the way. So that's a long said, time. It's said in second page. Any further discussion? Peter? The question I would have is. It was I mentioned 160,000 or something that's already expended because of all the engineering work that went into it. Is there any money in reserve for these new ideas, or is this going to be uh, a free idea? Is it, you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's 120,000, but yeah, whatever the money was, I'm yeah, I was just trying to quote what I thought. No, the, 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 the needs assessment has been done, and that was a lot of what some of that, that expense was the needs assessment in right. addition to the drawings. And so a lot of the needs have already already been dealt with, so we have, we have pretty good awareness of the needs, right. But so there's can, not any more money that would be expected to be may, expected. In order to get anything actually drawn up, then, the, then yes, there will. Yes, I agree with that. So, but for right now, I don't think that there needs to be any more to, to, to go further into the further assessment. Okay. Yeah. 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 Good. All right. All in favor of that motion? Aye. Aye. Motion, please. All right. That's those two. Now, that's all the technical things I have. All right. So, representative search, we have somebody who'd like to introduce herself. And if you would, please tell us who you are. Uh, I'm Kaylee Gibson. How do you spell Kaylee? A A Y L E Y. Okay. Uh, I'm in the 10th grade. All right, so you're in the 10th grade. How many years have you gone to Danville School? Uh, I moved here in the 8th grade from Alabama. Okay. Do you consider yourself a student in good standing at Danville School? All right. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about Longhorn meetings? Um, not my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my favorite. Sorry, 
So we're going to give you an idea. This is what we do. We do it a lot. We do it every Monday. And so we'd like you to come back another time and see what you think about, because we got to see if you will go back. That's probably the main reason that we have to, we're going to invite you back one more time. And then we're going to see what we can consider. And we've all got your application. You know, so we'll go back and review that application. Now that we know which specific Kaylee from Alabama that this is, I'm sure we put a lot of Kaylee from Alabama. And thank you for coming. Do you have any questions for Kaylee right now? All right. Do you have any questions for us? Um, yeah. Okay. If you have any for the next time, you can let us go. Okay. Then I'll move on with that one. And what's the last thing in our board business is new hire approval. And so we have a new hire. And I'll turn this over first to the superintendent. Um, yeah, I look, so uh, Dave found somebody, um, you know, right? Looking at his credentials and talking to him, he might have a renaissance person who's got a background in building trade, he's got a background in public administration, very kind of eclectic educational experience. But um, he's run his own company, he's worked in the building trade, and somebody else has been doing the for a while. Uh, he seems to be really uh, uh, engaged to the notion of uh, interesting kids who uh, work in the program is all about. They can speak more to the I don't have the email separate to describe it. You want to talk about it? What's more eloquent than I'm being right now? Very good. Um, I think they have that Renaissance description to really describe it. It's not every day you have a candidate who comes in. Who is certified in green building by the Estamaro Design Build School, who has a master's in public administration from Columbia, has built two boats um, in Boston Harbor, and worked in a um, high end sawmill um, as well as running his own construction company. Um, and being an environmental educator um, for working with city kids um, on a pole uh, ship. So there's a real, this brings up phenomenal. Background, he's very excited about uh, teaching. You know, he's really come into the history his craft. He's really excited about teaching it. Um, I think he was, I was really excited to see a candidate go up and also play a quality candidate yesterday. Um, I'm impressed that he, that he built his own boats. I, uh, I don't see that anything is going to be happening here. And it's very simple. Can he weld? Can he plumb? Yeah. Uh, very I, I, I'm I, I'm just yeah. looking for the um, you, you really got me hooked on this because um, turning students out from, if they're not going to college if they're not going to the military yeah. you, you just don't want to turn them out you you need students that have learned to trade and that's really what that's really what that's the role of the well, tax center we don't yeah, it's just it's cool. yeah, I think you and I should probably schedule you to talk about yeah. your perception. The role of this program from start to finish, of, of the program I'm doing, mm -hmm. has always been preparing younger students for more experiential hands on careers, which is a possible placement in the tech center. Right. The role of the building trades teacher at the end of my school has always been a free, um, pretty much focused on construction, on building trades, which he has, I know, he's very much a part of that, and on skill building. We've never had a us, we've never had somebody who's a dedicated welding instructor or a dedicated public instructor because those are specialized fields that are where tech center, where they that are in the purview of our regional tech center. And we've had we've had welding instruction and we've had intro to welding, which um, I don't know if we've ever had plumbing here, but I never said we were going to teach. So I think no, that's, that's that's one thing that's not that's a question that's not. not no, and it's a well, but it's but it's, it's, a it's not an attack center. But it's a profession that attack center, right? So we get a student, we get a student who is who builds skill, who has built a habit of mind to be a trade person, who has technical experience in their early years, who goes to the tech center and does the plumbing and heating course, which is a professional level course, who has recognized credential, and then they're employable. But that's always been the role of regional tech center. Right. I don't never say anything. Because we don't have the space, we don't have the space. No, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just, yeah. Maybe I, maybe I didn't say that. Uh, You're saying, are, are you saying that being a boat right is not necessarily a transferable skill in this region, and yeah. our duty skills translate to what we need? 
I think Dave's perception is like we talked about Dave too. That is a common perception of the program that it is. It's, fun. it's like that it's matching a trades, a full yeah. trades program. I think that's where right. that might right. be coming from. Right. So right. those people are looking at what he's been telling us. That it is. And so if you, people with the perception that it's wrong that won't look at the, the data to get it changed can't be reasonable. And so if somebody tells you that you're wired, how can we turn in all these plumbers? And then the day of the work program has introduced literature that says, this is what we do, hands-on and experiential learning. And nothing in there says plumbing. And they say, you're putting out plumbers. That person's not being reasonable. I think what you explained, Dave, is making $40 an hour. Yeah. Right. And so, and so, and so what, what, what Dave's saying is, are you planning to drop everything with other plumbers? That can work out here. I just want to be clear. Yeah. I, you know, I see it as I, 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 I don't want I want a, a sailboat building class. I mean, I, I don't want I don't want to be. I'm just talking about his his resume and right. why he is a highly qualified. Right. So if I was the master of English's previous jobs before you hired him, we talking about resume classes. Dave, what do you think? I mean, I mean, what was helpful that Dave said to me? There's, you know, there's the students who learn better with experience, mm -hmm. and it may be they're not doing well in school, and this is a way to give them an opportunity that helps them to succeed in addition to the traditional learning, and it's prepping them for perhaps a full trade right. program for junior and senior year. So it's prepping those young, younger kids to get those skills, build their confidence, feel good. That was my understanding of that, that conversation. Was, that is that, right. Yeah. There's also this particular position because it's locally funded because it's under the scope of what I supervise, but it's always been a part of the campus. It goes farther into building trades. You know, we're talking about tiny house construction, finishing the house project that's been going on in our school for the last decade plus. Um, we are talking about a more specific building trades program, but we've only ever taught that for a two period of time, right? So we could teach construction trades. But it's also they like again, we talk, we're talking about our specific skill trade, you're also talking about the There are there's there are limits, there are limitations on what you can have for programming in a non-technical education center to stay or not. Yeah. So I think you have to be cognizant of that. We would even if everybody at the stable wanted to have a plumbing program, we probably not have a lot of success to show the plumbing. Fine. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I think that, that impressed me about Zachary when I talked with him, I had a couple of conversations with him, is I see him as as, as a young, I'm old enough to call everybody a young man now, uh, a young man who's got a lot of things, interesting things with science and building trades, et cetera, who can be an example to students of what you can do if you have interest in that area. And that's, you know, and, you know, we talk about, you can talk about teaching skills and teaching skills is one thing, but a bigger, bigger part of me is inspiring kids to want to learn. That's where I see the advantage of finding somebody like, Zach. I don't know where, I don't know how they found him. We didn't have that conversation, but he walked into our lives here and he's going to be an asset to the school. Kids are going to glom onto him because of his personality and because he has a skill set and he knows how to work 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 in these programs and he's going to inspire kids to do the things that we want them to do to stay in school and be ready to go to a tech center and get one license your electric electrician's license whatever and does he have a teaching license that's what i mean yes okay. Are you qualified for the qualified for the job? Has a teaching license? Are you recommending him? They're right. They're right. recommending him. I'll consider a motion. I'll make the motion. I'll take, I'll take, <laughs> I'll take it from somebody. What is your motion? I'll make a motion to approve the new hire of Zachary Baker as the tech administrator. Okay, I've got a motion on the table. Can I get a second? Thank you, sir. Um, any discussion? All in favor? All right. Aye. Motion carries. Well, that's that. Okay. Um, what's up next on this agenda is public input. Does anybody from the public want to say anything? GRC 181 to 35, and RC 741 to 18 and a half time, and they are currently doing it in the max of our stats. 81 to 35 with the JV file. Oh, awesome. That's a lot. Alice, currently stoned and make the entire 
Future agenda items. I'm looking at the budget. Okay, so we need to talk, we're going to talk about our next meeting date right now. How soon do you think this amended budget can be ready? When's the next week? Thursday. Well, I'm busy. Yeah. I'm busy Wednesday. I'm on a committee. Um, Thursday. Thursday. Who's got a bill? I, I need a meeting. I need a meeting date and a budget to talk. So this will be a special meeting. So we have a, a two-day window to form. Okay. So, so you're already meeting as a board on Wednesday. Meeting. Can you make that a dual purpose meeting? <laughs> you have to. And you got you have to, to uh, you're close one out and then yeah. just open another. Uh, you, can, you can have an expanded agenda. I don't think that's a good I don't I, I think that's I think that meeting has already been scheduled to talk about the building and the building only. And I think that you're opening the can of worms there with people that want to start from scratch on everything. I don't know what's from scratch from the phone. Let me talk to let me talk to Mike tomorrow and find out how quickly we can. So everybody heads on a swivel for when the next special meeting is. The next meeting of this board as is as a committee on January the eleventh. And then subsequently our next actual meeting is our next scheduled monthly meeting February. So we set some day, days next week if you can. Just the 11th. Just the 11th. Well, the 12th or the 12th? The 12th? But if we did it at 7, if we did 6 o'clock in the library, we did 5 30. There's a lot of times we can do that already. I have questions about that concert. All right. So, we'll talk to Mike tomorrow. And talk to Mike tomorrow. I'll get back to you and say this week. Expect to hear from me ready, and then we'll mail down the day that we've got time. Expect to hear from me and be exceedingly flexible. Wednesdays, I have class. Okay. You don't have to be yet. So I disagree. I'd love to have you there, but I, I can't yeah. schedule around your class. Wednesdays, I'm great. Yeah. Okay. Oh, what if we're a ride? It's dark. No. Okay. So we'll all be in touch. Um, that's it. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Take one second. Vote. Out. Thank you, folks. Wait, 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 wait. 821.